Hi everyone, here's the answer to the question two on the recitation. Uh, we are assuming the five stage pipeline that you guys have gone over in, in lecture. So fetch, decode, execute, memory access, and write back. Uh, and we're also asked to assume that the pipeline forwards, uh, aka bypasses any operands whenever possible, installs only if needed to sat satisfy a RAW, uh, read after write dependence that can't be forward or bypassed. And we also assume that all loads and stores hit in the one cycle data cache. Uh, so we're given this set of instructions that's executed in this order, and we're asked to complete the pipeline diagram for the first seven cycles. And let me just go over the, the five stage pipeline qu really quick, real quick. Um, the first stage is fetch. So this means that the instruction is being fetched from the instruction memory. Decode means that the instruction is being decoded into its various parts so that we know which control signals to turn off um, and also uh, which registers we, we might be using. Execute means that the instruction is actually being executed and this usually involves ALU, uh, so maybe it's an arithmetic operation, maybe it's shifting some bits, maybe it's branching. Um, the fourth stage is memory access, which means that if the instruction needs to access any data in memory, this is where it happens. And finally, write back means that the result from the operation will be written back into the register file. Uh, and we're given that the first instruction here, add t1, t2, t3, is already going through the fetch stage. And we're asked to fill out the rest of the pipeline. So already we know that since add is going through the fetch stage, it's going to go without any dis disruptions into the decode stage in the next cycle and then execute and then memory access and then write back. And now the interesting part is when we look at the second instruction. As we can see here, uh, we do have a read after write dependence between the first instruction and the second instruction because the sec second instruction is utilizing the T1 register, which should have an updated value after this add instruction is executed. But because this um, dependence can be handled with a with a bypass operand we don't we actually can start the fetching of the second instruction while the add instruction is being decoded so whenever the add instruction is finished executing and t1 has that we figured out what the new value of t1 is that value is immediately sent uh, or made available to the second instruction so that xor t2 t1 t T2 utilizes the new value of T2 and not the old value. And so we can actually just fill out the cycles right here like normal. And then once again, if we look at the third instruction, load word T1 for T2, this instruction is using the T1 and T2 registers, and the T2 register value will change after the previous XOR op operation. But once again, because of forwarding or bypassing, that value is made uh, available almost immediately to, to this current third instruction. So we don't have to worry about delaying our pipeline. So we can just start the fetch of this instruction during the decode of the previous instruction, and then go on as usual with decode, execute, memory access, right back. And now this next instruction is where we run into some issues. As you can see, again, there's a read after write um, dependence here because sub T2, T5, T1 uh, is, utilize, is utilizing the T1 register uh, and it wants to get that value. And T1 is being filled in with whatever value is at the four, four byte offset from T2 in memory, but because load word involves memory access, so accessing data from memory, we're not able to forward or bypass that, that result immediately to the sub instruction. So we actually have to wait until this instruction is properly executed um, the, and the memory is accessed and that result is written back into the T1 register. So 
what we do is we can still we can still fetch the instruction while the previous instruction is being decoded, but in the fifth cycle we actually have to delay that and we can't start decoding or executing until we skip that one cycle because by skipping that one cycle we're able to guarantee that the memory is we have to wait for the memory to be accessed and for the result to be written back before we can execute this instruction. And then uh, the next instruction actually we can go as normal. Um, it's, it's, it's only using the T2 and T5 registers, which um, there's no read after write dependence here. Um, we're, we're reading from T5, but T5 was never written to previously. And in this case, we can just start with the fetch on the, the fetch in cycle six while the sub instruction is being decoded and then decode this one right here. And notice that I didn't put the fetch of this last instruction in cycle five because when we delay the pipeline, we're delaying the we're essentially delaying the entire circuit or the entire processor. So we're not able to perform anything while, while this delay is happening. 